Hey there, welcome to another episode of Connected Brand. This week, I'm joined by two absolute powerhouses when it comes to building and scaling communities. Now, individually, these two folks have built up massive followings, both with their thought leadership as well as with their methodologies. Now, they've joined forces, and together, co-founders Mark Killens and Nick Bennett are teaching B2B businesses how to put people over everything. Nick, Mark, welcome to Connected Brand. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules. You're both amazing parents who are wildly busy. You're both amazing co-founders who are also wildly busy raising a company, if you will. Um, before we dive into the meat and potatoes of today's episode, let's this this is a wild crossing of paths from MK's past life. Um, because Mark and I used to work together at HubSpot. Nick and I used to work together at Alice. What happened in the time that I parted ways with each of you respectively that you found your way to each other? You want to share, Nick, the Yard House story? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it was actually, at the time, I was still at Alice. Um, and so Mark and I, we funny enough, we've never worked together before, but I, it's, you know, Boston tech scene, it's very small. And um, he was like, hey, we should go grab dinner. We went to Yard House in Burlington. We were just chatting. He was the new CMO over at Airmeet. Um, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I knew the space really well as a field marketer. And we were having dinner. We were just catching up. It was more of like, hey, you know, what's going on? We just started talking about different things. And he was like, hey, would you ever want to come and, and work at Airmeet? And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I was telling him how I was really interested in the creator side. And we talked about building something really interesting at Air Meet for creators, kind of like a collaboration studio, um, plus events, all that good stuff. And it ended up happening. I, I ended up, I realized it was time for me to leave Alice after two years. And um, it was a good time to, to be able to do that. And I went to work for Mark and... Um, it was short lived, unfortunately, not for any of our, our, you know, issues that we, we caused, but you know, just the product wasn't in a good spot. And, um, you know, unfortunately a lot of the team had to be laid off. And so I was one of those people and TAC was born. Wow. Well, I'm so sorry for, for that, uh, air meet in particular, but I'm not sorry for the journey that has unfolded for you both since. So, um, Tack, tell me all about Tack. What are y'all up to? Also, where did this idea come from, too? I want to know mm. about that. Was that another meeting at, at Yard House? Like, what what happened? <laughs> no, so so that that's an interesting story. So we're at Air Meet, um, 2022. It was November 2022. I still have like the actual image in a notebook of the first kind of way that we start to think about like people first. This idea of people first. Um, that I think was born for, from me and you MK probably know this from my time at HubSpot. I used to talk about like serve people first a lot, yep. like servant leadership, serve people first, you know, because that was instilled in us from Brian Darmesh and others. Um, so I actually own serve people first.com. This is a quick aside, I have done nothing with it. But then I think that like in my head has been brewing for a long time. So when Nick and I started to talk more about, like he said, creators and whatnot and, and using people as a way to really resonate in the market and create this connection with the right audience, with your customers, with your partners, it's like, wait a minute, there might be something here. So we started to kind of test that idea out in public in November, 2022. And then in the next four, five, six months, it became apparent to me and Nick was like, wait a minute, something, something might be here, like around this like ideology. Um, so that led me initially just to build a very loose, I call it the minimal viable audience, uh, not MVP, but MVA, um, which is which is pretty easy to do these days through a community called Club PF that launched in April 2023, and. I wanted to see if this this thing that we've been talking about online on LinkedIn for the last few months started to like really make sense and go, and did people want to like spend fifteen bucks a month to learn more about it? Within a month, we had hundred people signed up. You know, so I was like, wait a minute, that like that's a proof point. And then Nick and I got back together, and Aramie was going through a time where like yeah, they just had to make some structural changes, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and we decided to join up at end of May. I think June 1st, initially we announced it to say, here's Club PF. And then, then TAC came a little bit actually later than that. But that, that was the genesis to kind of the, your question, MK. 
I love that. That's, I mean, what uh, the best things come from just a napkin that you just doodled on or a notebook that you doodled yeah. on um, time and time again. And I can attest that that people first mentality has been part of your legacy, Mark. Um, the one, one thing I remember too about that to, to personify that is the forest that was, or maybe the jungle that jungle. was your section of our office. And it wasn't just because you love plants, although I'm sure you do. Um, it was symbolic. It was symbolic about the ecosystem that you were coming into and were responsible for keeping alive and building regenerative practices in. And I, that, that leadership lesson always stuck with me. Um, but so now you're teaching marketers and I assume executives go to market leaders how to take that people first mentality and apply it to all of their go to market practices. Did I, did I capture that right? We, did, we, yes. So Nick and I schemed like in June around like, what could we do next? Cause I was like, I'll probably end up leaving Aramie too, just cause I, I feel like this is the time to like, build something. I've always wanted to build something. So yeah, he and I started to, you know, kind of talk and scheme a little bit in June 2023. So it's crazy to think like he, he and I have to keep telling ourselves like, we're only technically like eight months into this being public. Like we announced it in August, but we, we did, we built TAC on the, on three different pillars or three different legs of a stool on purpose, which with the, the foundation to your point, MK of people first. So, um, Nick, why don't you actually maybe unpack a little more on like the, the ideology of people first? Cause that kind of goes into then how we've, how we're trying to create a connected and MK, you said it really well, ecosystem that, that just kind of creates this natural value between the people participating. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, and I was going to say, you know, even going back to that, like I, I remember I, I just had twins at the time and I was going through this and Mark was like, Hey, we should, we should do this. And, um, I've always wanted to, it's always been a thing. And I think part of me had that imposter syndrome of like being afraid to take that leap, but Mark was super successful. And I was like, listen, if, a CMO is willing to take a chance and wants to work with me on this. Like, what's the worst that happens? We go find something else. And I was such, I was so bought in because I feel like people first is something that I was doing for a while. You just didn't call it people first ultimately. But at its core, people first is really a strategy that uses storytelling relationships and partnerships to create, capture, and convert demand into revenue. So it takes people and it puts them at the center of every interaction and experience, which resonated with me because as someone that was a field marketer, or event marketer for a lot of years, how do you create an experience with the attendee at mind or the person at mind of everything that you do to create these experiences? And I was like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Like everything is all about the, the old school method. Like, hey, you know, we just have to be very transactional and like no one wants a transactional you know, way to work in, in 2024 and beyond, how do you create meaningful interactions? How do you build relationships? Because I mean, it, we, we don't have to tell this, but people buy from people. We want to go to market and be partnership centric. How do you create kind of like MK, like you said, like an ecosystem of people, whether it's people, whether it's companies, brands, whatever, you're going together to create waves in the market. That's amazing. Well, I think one thing, so you talked about it being a strategy, but just the way both of you are talking about this, like this feels like an inherent values system that a company needs to adopt. And then naturally every action in sequence that happens with that value as the nucleus of what they're building naturally just comes to fruition in this way. And like you even say this too, you're like, I know the days of brand spam. And yet my inbox is still flooded <laughs> with brand spam. Um, you know, you're asking for meaningful reactions. And yet so many brands are still missing the mark on this. Like you, as you're working with these companies, how do you help those brands step outside of themselves to first acknowledge, hey, your value system might not be in perfect alignment with the practices that you say you want to have in being people first. It's an excellent point. So I'll go back to the HubSpot kind of example experience that we lived through, MK. Inbound marketing was a way to do marketing where you had to first kind of believe and buy into it. And then mm -hmm. if you did, that ethos and that value system that's developed helps you, helped you become that much better and more customer centric, people first, when you, when you actually executed your marketing. We specifically called this, so a few, there's parallels to inbound marketing, by the way, of course, 
we we specifically thought, wait a minute, inbound marketing is great. It's changed a lot. Why don't we take that like idea of inbound marketing and apply it to the all of go to market? So how you you know create an audience and and create demand up front all the way through to how you partner and and really make sure on the customer side of things that you're doing everything you can for your customers. So that's why we deliberately called it People First GTM and created some principles to underpin what it means. Because I think with leaders listening to this, the thing you have to realize first is how you think about the way in which you have created the conditions for your go-to-market. So culture, which is about values, which is about beliefs, which is about reinforcement of good behavior and then not so good behavior and like how you talk about that. Like all of that is ultimately going to underpin how your company is then shown and perceived uh, in the marketplace and your brand's reputation. So I think the point you just, I just want to call that out in case, like it's very important that this is a, you know, you first have to you know, believe and we call it almost psychographic fit. And I don't think enough companies think about psychographic fit when they're qualifying or doing other things. Psychographic fit is really important. Yeah. I mean, this is far beyond like buyer personas now. We're we're talking like buyer personas, there is a facet of psychographic if you're doing it right. But you're talking about like how do we map the internal and external culture such that it is in it serves in pursuit of helping the person that we're trying to help succeed in and throughout business as well too. And that that's got to be a paradigm shift for the folks that you talk with like that aha moment when you're in the conversations with the t- leadership teams that you're trying to help transform must be remarkable for them to make that connection. Yeah. I mean, Nick has a ton of examples because he he's, his big thing is like, how do we work with people, creators, influencers, customers, and bring them in to all different aspects of your go-to-market. I mean, mm-hmm. so people first, Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a customer called, uh, named Hexagon, $6 billion revenue kind of holding company. They've acquired a lot of different, um, companies. They're not exactly PE. It's one big brand, but Hexagon, you can look them up. We've been working with, um, one of their v- smaller, but very successful. And, and it could be way more successful brands acquired called cabinet vision and the SVP of marketing for that group of companies, including Cabinet Vision, brought us in because she's like, the way we go to market today is so company first. We also are doing, we're not using our, the 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 strength of the brand of Cabinet Vision and we're trying to like force Hexagon onto people. We did all of this fascinating discovery and we're about to present the final strategy recommendation in a few weeks. And the way we came to this is we we listened and talked to their customers, their partners, got really deep into the ecosystem And found three pillars that they need to lean into. One is the brand more, the trust that was already there. One is actually content and resources. These cabinet makers love helping each other through resources and content. And then the other one is community and networking. They love learning from one another, not so much like cabinet vision or even hexagon. How do they facilitate those interactions? So there's there's elements of people first infused in all of that. And so what Nick and I always say is like your company is probably in some way doing people first. Or did people first, and maybe it's lost sight of it. And now it's like, how much do you want to lean into that? Is it a transformational thing at the, the go-to-market level where you want to transform the whole thing? Or do you start somewhere small? So there's a lot of ways you could like kind of you know begin in this journey of becoming more connected, which is why I love the name of the podcast, or connected to the the to the right people in your company's we keep using the word ecosystem, which is interesting, but your your company's you know, network, if you will. Each company has its own network, right? Like <laughs> its own network. Well, and and I think what takes a network and turns it into an ecosystem is the the synergistic balance between giving and taking from the folks that are in the community and the folks that are benefiting from the community, right? The folks who are making revenue as a result of some of the community activations. But it it's synergistic, right? It's not just a give and it's not just a take. It's a give and a take that has balance and harmony and benefit, which in this community, it sounds like of your customer, it's education, it's thought transference, it's keeping their edges sharp. Uh, I'm sure there's a pun in there from cabinet makers about edges and things like that. Anyway. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say as well, I mean, there's there's a lot of simple things that can be done that I mean, I'm talking as simple as no more stock photography. Like it, like use real people, 
Um, you'd be surprised at how many people still use stock photography in a lot of their website stuff, like simple stuff like that, or all emails come from an actual human. I still don't understand why companies are using like marketing at xyzcompany.com because let's be honest, as marketers, like in my past, I've seen that go to black holes where no, no one replies, you're not getting the, res, you know, the results that you want. Um, you can make it a lot more human. And it's like, how do you ultimately create more conversational webinars and events, again, putting people first, but also create the sales emails that come from those webinars and events that are more personal and that resonate. Yeah, it makes so much. Well, and one thing you said earlier, Nick, that I don't want to bury the headline on was what is your methodology too? So can you walk us through the methodology again, a little bit slower and let's take it step by step to, um, I think some of the tactics you're talking about with using a real person for the, um, from the sender name, uh, using real faces. AI has made it so much easier to use semi real faces than, you know, just purchasing stock photography. But you, you mentioned a methodology, Nick, at the beginning, and I'd be remiss if I didn't actually actually dive into that with each of your brilliant minds. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, I'll just kind of mention it again, and then Mark, feel free to jump in here. So it's a business strategy that uses storytelling, relationships, and partnerships to create, capture, and convert demand into revenue. It's designed to put people at the center of every interaction and experience. So in one layer deeper of that, you're using three channels ultimately, and, and Mark can kind of go into this, but using three channels, three types of offers in an overall partnership strategy, each of those channels ultimately designed to create, capture, and convert demand at different stages of the customer journey. So the offer gives the business infinite ways to create value and build trust with buyers and customers. And then each channel becomes more efficient when you partner with others, which we talked about this whole ecosystem thing. Um, but each offer should ideally be crafted through a partnership with other people or businesses, which partnering with people is at the heart of the model ultimately. Yep. Makes so much sense. Um, and, and you're working with companies to transform how they approach their practices. This for us, you know, we come from brands who just embody this naturally, who were doing this naturally, but it sounds like you're working with companies where this is a complete transformation of not only their mindsets, but of their culture potentially. Um, what, let's walk through a customer of yours or client of yours and really make this very tactical and tangible for folks who are like, okay, it sounds good in theory, but like in practice, like how do I even go about doing this? Yeah, we got, we got many and then we'll even use MK, uh, your company, if you're cool with it as well. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, I'll kick it off. I'll I get free consulting from two of the best marketers. Oh, yeah, <laughs> please. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you're doing a lot of good stuff. So I think we're just highlighting, but like, we'll see, um, highlighting all your success and, and your, your, the good stuff. But well, I'll start with, um, zoom info. So zoom info, um, very well-known big public company. Uh, they, they sell products for many different personas. So this is a, a good example of a public company. Nick will go into one that's a private company at a different stage of life cycle. And Zoom Info came to us to help them understand how to create their own community. And just pause here for a second. There is a difference between rented communities or re kind of rented spaces versus owned spaces, owned communities. Simple way to think about this is you can rent a car. You can rent a, a house or apartment. We can own a car or own a house and apartment. That same model is applied to communities. So with Zoom Info wanted to build uh, their own community. They technically already had one um, and we're helping them understand that one better, uh, which is Zoom Info University. They, they actually have a really great asset in Zoom Info University, but they wanted to lean more into this idea of member led growth. So Nick mentioned these three channels. The way we think about the channels when it comes to this people first GTM model is you've community led, which everyone has heard of, right, MK? Yep, CLG, through and through. CLG, community led growth. The one that's very unknown to people that we're trying to evangelize, Nick and I, is this idea of member led growth. And that's the idea of creating your own community, your own space. And there's many ways you can do this where you pull in people from the broader community of engagement, conversations, interactions that are happening, and you pull them deeper into your brand. And then the third one, the third channel is customer-led growth, which is also being talked a lot about, but it's also still kind of unknown to some degree. Yeah. So for Zoom Info, we're gonna talk about their idea of creating an own community to create this membership-esque experience 
that is pulling people in from the community-led growth stuff they're doing. They're actually doing a lot of great things on TikTok. So check them out on TikTok, by the way, Zoom Info. Uh, they're doing a lot of stuff on LinkedIn, of course. They have a ton of other places. They're, they're putting their um, community activation play, events being one of them. So they're using um, event-led growth as a way to offer up value to their community and pull members in now with this own community. They're calling it, by the way, the modern GTM community. Modern mm. GTM communities, the Slack-based community. It's really easy to sign up. They you have events, though, that are pulling people in. They have content that's pulling people in, content-led growth, which is another type of offer. And they even have some free products that hopefully get more recognition through product-led growth that are pulling people in. So those are the three different types of offers. But the coolest thing is they're partnering with other people. I mean, look, they're partnered with Nick and I. Okay, that might not be the best example because they're you know paying us whatever, but they're partnering with other people to launch this thing. Or when they did launch it a few weeks ago, they had 35 creators that are kind of speaking to built you know audiences with their ideal customer profile to bring in to this membership community by activating conversations in these rented communities, mostly right now in like LinkedIn to some degree, right? Um, so anyway, like they're doing, I basically hit on all six to seven of the different kind of growth motions in the model. They're doing all these things, but they needed a way to kind of understand how they fit together, right? Like, and that's the other thing, MK, and I'll pause in just a moment, is like most people like have misconceptions of what these mean. We're trying our best to not say this is the definitive way on how to do it or even how maybe it means when it goes comes to that community-led growth. But we do think there should be some clear lines in the sand that says community-led growth is the tip of the spear. It's like this, like this podcast and this season of the podcast is all about like the, the connected uh, – the connection, right? The connected customer, the connected community, if you will. Like that's the tip of the spear. So like, how do you like make sure that you're at least doing that? And then when it's the most appropriate, how do you create that deeper relationship and connection to Nick's point with someone that then gets them into an owned community? Um, we just wanted to try to create bright lines between things. I think it makes so much sense. And nobody has illuminated the difference between the community and the members, right? They're, they're two very different groups. Um, and arguably, one, to your point, is the tip of the spear. It's, you know, you can be a community and you can be a passive uh, com community member. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're there actually helping a company grow in the way that they want to grow, ideally through revenue, um, or that you're actually amplifying what it is that that company is doing. So when you've crossed that threshold from community to member, it sounds like there is a um, there's a certain level of activity that someone needs to have in order to be part of that community, uh, part of that membership, rather, um, to help amplify and or activate that brand in, in some way. And I understand the distinction between those two things, right? The easiest way to think of that, about that uh, you did, is just they have to sign up. They have to explicitly say, I'm going to sign up for the modern GTM community with Zoom Info. And it's usually a one-click sign-up because they can use their Google account or LinkedIn account or whatever. But like, hey, that is what I'm going to do, right? So there has to be an explicit, think of it like this way, go back to my marketing, explicit opt-in. Mm, yep, yep. Totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. I'm not just an innocent bystander. I'm, I'm, I'm active and immersed in what it is that this community is about and the intent of this community overall. Yeah, because like LinkedIn, you, you, you have to sign up. But it's a yep. rented space. Like you don't have right. any direct ownership over LinkedIn, right? I mean, you don't. And so it's like that's the difference. And um, yeah, I, I think I think there's just a lot of confusion over like what is community-led growth. And by the way, the the reason why we feel like all seven of these things are growth models is each of them gives you a lot of data. Some to, some are easier to collect than others, but all of it is based on the data that you can gather about the person hmm. and yep. what they're engaging with, what they're doing, what they're signing up. And to us, that's the best way to understand how qualified someone is, is using engagement signals from the channels, the offers, and the partnership motion you have to judge how far along in a buying process someone might be or how committed they are to the brand and the ecosystem. Hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, I love that because um, what becomes really exciting about a membership model uh, and member member led growth, if you will, is that it is self-sustaining at a certain point in time when your community is supporting your members and your members are supporting each other. So your active members that could be revenue generating members for you. They could also be non-revenue generating members, it sounds like, but their intent is extremely high. So when you cross pollinate your, you know, your active Active revenue generating members and your high intent members, that model, it's just a self-serving um, dream for so many logos who are noticing that people don't want to talk to their sales reps. <laughs> people don't want to sit through very lengthy sales cycles anymore. They do their decision making like 80% of it. I forgot what the latest stat is, but like 70% of it is done not in a conversation with anybody on their selling team in an organization. So this helps to expedite that. This helps reduce sales cycle, increase the, your, you know, your win rates because your members are actively there helping to cultivate someone um, throughout their selling process. You add, you add your customers to that. Nick will talk about this right now with Sugo, a vent technology company. You add your customers into that, it's like kind of starts to become game over to some degree. That's amazing. Tell us more, Nick. <laughs> yeah. So, so Swugo, which is in the event tech space, and I feel like this is, you know, this is a fun one because again, as like a field marketer, event marketer, I like, I very familiar with, with event tech. And so we came in and we actually built them the first ever maturity model, an event maturity model. And Mark, I'm sure, you know, Mark loves event maturity models. He absolutely knows that it. Mark's a hard stop on models. Mark just likes models. <laughs> Yeah. It's, that maturity models, wow, that one's a game changer right there. <laughs> yeah, it, it and honestly, so we came in and our goal was to help them build a, an event maturity model and help them become the event tech company in that space where they play. And they're very much more focused on in-person versus the the virtual side of like, you know, the gold castes and zuttles of the world. Um, but a piece of that is how do we take this maturity model, which is an incredible cornerstone asset, and how do we somewhat use content-led growth, which you know we're doing so many things right now. We're actually building out a lot of their their activation calendar for the next you know couple of months, and how do we repurpose all different pieces of hey. As customers, how do you you know self identify as where you are on the maturity model? How do you figure out? Hey, what can I do to opt in to different pieces of this? How can I figure out what does a maturity model even mean in the event industry? Because again, similar to people first, even the customers of Swugo were like, "This is this is amazing. I feel like I'm here, but no one's ever done this before. So like, I need." you to help inform me like where I even am. So we did an incredible event. It was about a 90 minute event. It was one of their top, you know, pipeline generating for enterprise um, prospects out of anything that they've done. And so we've taken that, we're taking the content led piece. And I feel like we're layering on kind of like an event led growth kind of piece. And if you think about like the event led growth methodology, it's discover, engage, grow. So how do you use an ev events and webinars to ultimately find the right people at the right accounts? So, you know, target accounts, ABM, whatever you want to call it. How do you engage with the buyers and customers with the right experience, the right content, and the right programming? And then how do you grow, which is the, the generating the pipeline? It's advocating by placing events at the right moment in the customer journey. So we're now taking these webinars that play off of the maturity model. And we've done other webinars in different series of like that before, but now we're being very deliberate of taking these webinars, tying them back to different stages of the maturity model and having enterprise prospects and target accounts deliver that message of the people that they already trust in the industry. Um, and it's it's been fantastic. Their, their webinars, they I mean, they're getting 300 to 500 people signing up for each of these webinars and they're getting like 60 to 70% show rates and the amount of pipeline that they're generating from this, this whole thing is fantastic. And they're getting the right accounts. They're serving up, they, they understand the repurposing piece. They understand where to serve it within that buyer's journey, whether you're in that awareness consideration, whatever, they know exactly how to fuel that so that it's getting to the right people and it's coming from the people, not Swugo as a brand. It's coming from the people that they trust. So it's like a little bit of uh, user-generated content in it, there um, exactly. to help propel the 
you know, the action within the community and then the activation of the membership throughout this method. Am I capturing that right? So absolutely, absolutely. rather than Swoogo saying, hey, look at me, look at all the things we did, look at all this great, have their customers say, look at all the wonderful things we've unlocked, evangelizing the product, evangelizing this, but using their content, using their thought leadership to activate a, a certain membership. And then the, I would say the community activation is just saying like, hey, do you want to be better at events? Do you, do you need a, a different event strategy? Like, is it no longer serving you? Come join us. Be a member here where we will share as much as we can to help you succeed. Um, and that right there is the pipeline that they're generating. It's just through that member activation. Exactly. Spot on. That's right. And, and that's where they have, like, they, I love that example, Nick. That's where they have a huge opportunity to become super deliberate and create an actual own community because they have mm. people opting in to download the maturity model now because they can, they heard about it through everything Nick said, events, content. We were, we've actually now introduced the idea of creating some free tools. It's almost like lightweight product led growth for Swugo yeah. based yeah, off yeah. of all this. Um, you talked about the partnership side, but like now it's like, wait a minute, the last thing that they could do, they've got community going, they've got their customers involved now, they've got partners involved is how do they create an owned community? Because they actually technically don't have one. They have a very hard now like opt-in. I want to download this or read about it or I want to learn more about it. But there's many ways they could do that now. And I think that's the, the thing for brands to realize as well is you can attack this, this idea in a few different ways. One is start with um, a North Star. So it's Swugo... Um, you know, and you could technically there's only one North Star, right? But I think you could technically have like maybe more than one, maybe. But what I'm trying to say is Sugo's North Star to some degree right now is this idea of how do we help businesses be better at using events as part of their overall revenue creation strategy, their go-to-market at the end of the day. We believe that events are being underutilized as a way to create more efficient revenue and ultimately create a more lovable brand. Sweet. There's a brand message above that, right? Because that's still kind of more in the solution level of messaging and positioning. There's still a brand message above that, but that North Star can act as a thing that then says, we want to create a community around this. In Zoom Info's case, it's like, wait a minute, we have a brand message. Their whole thing is about modern, mo modern GTM. Like they're like literally, their messaging, like we know really well is like modern go-to-market. That's what we help companies do. Um, okay, cool. Let's take that messaging and build something around it because there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of customers like doing it, talking about it. There's people like talking about it all in these different places that are being rented by you online. Let's create your own community, right? So you can, you can attack these, you can create a connected brand yeah. in a few different ways. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for sticking the landing on that because that's exactly what I heard you say is that like you can have the best messaging in the world. But if you don't have the right people first infrastructure with how you activate a community, how you activate a membership, you're going to miss the opportunity to create that cohesive, that uh, intentional and interwoven connected brand experience. And that's where so many brands falter and stumble is because they say we have the best message. Look at our website. Our H1 is incredible. It's the best H1 you've ever seen. Uh, and so they're like, but why isn't Anybody convert? Why are we closing business? Like they're missing all the very, very important work that you're helping brands create in the middle. It's bringing people together, right, Nick? It's like how do you bring people together? And when Nick, just as a quick aside, like Nick is super passionate about, uh, and I am as well, just like the creator influencer type model. And so it's like uh, before you'd have you'd have all these resources to create. A company now the, the the way to create a company you could do that with ai now in literally like less than 30 minutes like it, totally. it's crazy what like wix godaddy you can build a company including the the llc filing in like 30 minutes or less you have a logo is it gonna be great probably not like i would you know maybe advise against some of that but like you could do that now so that means an individual has full autonomy to build an audience and build a product. Now with AI, it's becoming so easy to build products, at least digital products. Uh, and you have your own, you, you have your, your brain now just got supercharged, right? So the, the thing that businesses have to realize, B2C gets this for the most part, B2B is slowly getting it and they're, they're playing catch up is the way in which you go to market is through partnering with other people that have built these audiences that then can, you can connect them with your brand and their audience, and you mutually benefit in a way. 
but we're so early, right? And Nick, if you want to share anything else about that. <clears throat> yeah, no, I mean, ultimately, yeah, you're, you're borrowing their trust and authority. Um, and I feel like B2B is just, they're still trying to adopt a B2C playbook when it comes to this. And it, it may think about it somewhat still very transactional because, you know, think about sponsored LinkedIn posts. You're seeing it more and more pop up. And I agree, I, you know, I get contacted by a lot of brands, but it's very transactional. Hey, Go post this LinkedIn post. I'll pay you money for it. It's a one-off thing. It, and half the time, the brand does nothing with that because they don't have the foundational aspects in place to be able to take advantage of like this people first thing. So how do you go back to the partnership model? It's like, hey, you still need me as part of your integrated marketing strategy as a creator but don't treat me like an outsider. Bring me in and infuse me into the team and I will show you on how to do it at top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of the funnel for customers. There's so many different ways to use creators and influencers and those are two different things as well depending on like the outcomes that you want to achieve. But you you have to there's so much education that needs to be done still which is a big piece of what i'm trying to do now nick nick Cherbo terminus do the terminus example this is a great example of everything you just said yeah so so terminus terminus is is one of our clients and so they came to us and they're like hey we want to sponsor um club pf and we we've never had anyone want to sponsor but mark and i talked and we were like no we can do something better here and so we talked to them we said hey Let's do this. Mark and I will do some LinkedIn content. We'll do webinars to fuel back to what your go-to-market strategy is for Q1 and Q2. We'll target your prospect accounts, bring them onto the webinar. So it's like, you know, Terminus led, but like Mark and I are the one that are the host of this webinar series. And on top of it, we're kind of bringing, how do you do less automation, more human, which is a big piece of like how to do better prospecting, which is what they're focusing on. And we were like, this is people first. And so we we moved away from just a club PF, club PF, very transactional one-off thing into a very much larger partnership strategy that they are very happy with. And they're like, this is amazing. And again, we wouldn't have known that this was possible if we didn't open up that conversation, educate on, hey, we can do more. And after one call, they were, they, they were bought in. I love what you've done there to challenge the notion uh, of, you know, Terminus, but also so many other folks that are out there about how you can build and grow and scale your business, right? That We're all about helping to um, move away from the transaction and the transactional nature of um, you know, the way we conduct ourselves in commercial systems. We care actually a lot about invitational practices, right? In this case, you invited Terminus to step to one side and say, you know what, there's a better way. There's a way that we can create like next gen thought leadership for your company, put your company at the forefront of it. And I love what you said about borrowing the trust and authority of both of your brilliant minds to help Terminus galvanize a community. And then I assume a membership that came following after, you know, I'm see. seeing that, that it's like an onion. You peel back all these layers. I'm seeing it all come out in, in real life. This is really remarkable. It is. It's awesome. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like, like Lupin Tali, you're doing it, right? Like this, the simplest answer is anyone who has a podcast is doing people first go to market. You're partnering with people to bring their trust, expertise, authority, subject matter, you know, knowledge into a conversation. However, that conversation is unfolded. You're taking that and turning that into a great content asset and you're using that content asset and putting that out into the rented community led growth spaces to create demand, to create an audience. That's people first. You're doing three out of the seven things. <laughs> like, it's amazing. We're almost there. Not quite 50%, <laughs> but you know, we're almost there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's it. And not to mention that like, there's just so much that we can learn. You're talking about this is being the tip of the iceberg with what AI can help us do. And, and in theory, the introduction of AI, it, it's similar to the introduction of automation back in the early 2010s when we were like, well, you can work smarter, not harder. Um, and what everybody else heard was like, no, you can blast the same thing you were doing, just do it at scale and immediately erode your trust, um, that you have with your community. Um, so I, I do fear that we're going to go in the direction of, of misuse. Um, but one of the guiding principles that you talk about in your acronym of people, which I want to break that down is originality. And I think that right there is how brands can 
uh, resist the temptation from just doing more for the sake of doing more with the introduction of AI. So let's let's start off by defining the acronym people. <laughs> and then I want to double click on originality. Yeah, yeah. the first three, I'll, I'll take really simple. It's like people, empathy, or originality. So we, you know, we did it somewhat on purpose, but we actually, we actually partnered with the Club PF community early days to help us come up with this. So that's another good example of like, you know, not coming up with something in a silo. That's the other thing brands um, do wrong. When you think about a connected brand, they work with their community and their customers to understand something. Like ZoomInfo, for example, this modern go-to-market community, they did a three week or so kind of private soft launch to partner with these early adopters to better understand what should be the benefits, what should be the programs, how should this play out connected, right? So anyway, like people's obvious, right? Like, you know, you, you want to create a genuine relationship with people, you, you know, you want to really make sure that uh, it isn't just, uh, I'm, I'm taking something from you and I'm not going to give you anything in return. Mm -hmm. Not good. Yep. Empathy, we've talked a lot about it recently in the last you know five to 10 years, at least, which is good. How being empathetic in everything you do is more important. Um, that's getting a spotlight on it, I think, just globally. Empathy and whatnot, there's still a lot of work to do. I'm optimistic that AI can actually be worked well for empathy because it helps people better understand some someone in the, maybe their own context in a way. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other podcast for another day probably, but Empathy is important, um, but originality, it's like Nick and I always say, like, we are, all, we are always trying to, for TAC, trying to make TAC be different. Different is always better than being better. So that requires you, and you can use AI to come up with original thoughts. It's usually just dot connecting, just connecting dots together to become somewhat original. But then it's also sometimes maybe niching down or whatever. But it's like, how do you make something that, is unique. It could be a reinvention of something or you're innovating off something, which is very common, but like you need to have something that is that rally cry is the thing you stand for. And, and that is MK, you said messaging positioning. It is part of that is part storytelling, which is one of the three core ingredients to good people first go to market. Um, but you need to have something that you can say, Hey, I, with the help of others have kind of created ownership of that's probably outside your product because the product now will just become, you know, a commodity, a race to the bottom. So there has to be like this, this other thing that you can build something off of. Yeah. I, I have a point of view on that, that the, the values, right? Someone's values is their original, is their originality. Love that. And if you don't have the values, everything else is disconnected. Um, but you got to start there. Without that value system guiding you and how in your discipline and your practices and reinforcing why you exist, not just what, not just how, to your point, the race to the bottom with the commodity warfare is underway, you know, see so your competitors have the same features as you and sometimes they're offering them for free to win your audiences. It's your values. That's the thing that keeps folks coming back. That's the originality and that unique point of view that folks are really sated by. Well, you know, well, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say as well, going back to the originality piece. Like I always tell myself, like on on LinkedIn specifically, like if I can't bring my entire self onto this platform, then then I don't want it. Like there's so many people that treat it as a very transactional platform, even knowing it's rented. And they, for me, it's a way to actually build relationships. Like I want people to understand, like again, kind of like values, like what I stand for, what I believe in, things like that, how my mind works, and. I try to be as original and as authentic as I can doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I mean, that, I mean, we, that's another episode too, as well. Uh, by the way, we are doing that AI episode that how AI is actually going to help us be connected. Um, that's amazing. Um, but you're talking about like the originality and how that actually galvanizes community in a rented space, which thank you for teaching me that term. It's a new term that I'm just going to run with um, because it makes so much sense. Right. But like when you have a rented space, you can take really good care of that space or you can treat it like trash. Um, and to your point, Nick, I think the authenticity that comes in that space makes a, a big difference in how folks perceive you and how well you're taking care of the space. Well, yeah, this has been so rich. I have so many notes. I have so many things that I need to immediately deploy right now. Um, if folks want to get to know you better, if folks want to get to know TAC better, what's the best place for them to find you? How can they get in touch with you? 
Three, three spots, right, Nick? I mean, we're, we're building these three legs to the stool we mentioned at the beginning of this. One is the TAC network. That's It's like four months into it. Um, so that's where you can find a lot of other great people. By the way, this podcast should be part of the network. Uh, it's completely we're free. Yeah. <laughs> Just as a quick shout out. But uh, the TAC network is all of these great leaders and, and and both like you know in the operator role but like leadership roles um who are leaning into people first go to market and have amazing shows and guests and stories most importantly the stories uh and the learnings to tell in this network so check it out tacknetwork.com and then we've talked about club pf that's just our community about all the stuff we talked about and then yeah if you want to get help with some services you can find us on um on that side too tacgtm.com tacgtm.com and I will say firsthand, because I love watching both of your content, like you're so approachable on LinkedIn. So if anybody's listening, just go follow Nick and Mark first, but then actually engage, comment, enjoy, ask questions, because you're not gatekeeping any of your knowledge. Uh, you're making it readily available for folks so that they can start helping themselves. Build in public. I love it. I love it. Uh, well, thank you so much for building in public in this space and joining me on Connected Brand. Uh, I, I'm humbled and so excited to get to share this space with y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, MK. Okay.